Our next speaker today is Carl Sterner. Carl has devoted his career to pushing the boundaries of sustainable design. He has contributed to multiple lead platinum and net zero energy projects, created game-changing energy and daylight modeling software, and is currently the director of design and sustainability at Sol Design and Consulting. He believes in the potential of architecture to create not only an ecologically viable, but also a more humane, equitable, and joyous world. Coming to you live, here's Carl with Summer House, Winter House, Design for Thermal Delight. Take it away, Carl. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here today. I want to talk about thermal comfort and thermal delight. So what does it mean to be comfortable? The question has profound implications for how we design buildings. It also has profound implications for the global environment. 13% of our global carbon emissions come from heating and cooling our buildings, a number that is likely to increase as the installation of air conditioning becomes more common in developing countries and as extreme weather becomes more severe. Yet for all the energy we expend heating and cooling our buildings, many of our spaces remain remarkably uncomfortable, too hot, too cold, too bright, too drafty. And in most of our buildings, the thermal experience is also monotonous, disconnected from the patterns of our natural world in ways that are increasingly seen as detrimental to our well-being. We desperately need a new approach to thermal comfort. I want to explore a possible alternative approach through an example, the Iowa Nest Residence. The Hour Nest is a net zero energy home in rural Iowa, which I designed and was completed at middle of last year. The home is burned into a south facing hillside with an intensive green roof and large south facing windows. <laughs> Iowa is considered a cold climate with more heating days than cooling days, but like much of the Midwest, its summers are still brutal, hot and humid. And yet this home has no air conditioning and requires minimal heating. It was projected to use nearly 80% less energy than a conventional new home. And its performance after a year of occupancy suggests that this number will be closer to 90% reduction. A significant portion of this energy savings is due to the home's approach to thermal comfort, not as an idealized static state, but as a rich and varied experience changing with the seasons and achieved through a series of passive design measures. This approach is described as thermal delight uh, by Lisa Hishong in her book, Thermal Delight in Architecture, which I highly recommend. The house was conceived of as two separate experiences, a summer house, which would be cool, airy and open, and a winter house, snug, tight and warm. To understand how this works, we need to go back to the original question, what is comfort? When we think of thermal comfort, we typically think of air temperature. That's what's on the thermostats. It's what controls the heating and cooling systems in most of our buildings. But that's a very narrow view of comfort. There are at least six factors and arguably more than that that affect our experience of thermal comfort. Air temperature and humidity are the obvious two. There's also radiant temperature. That's the temperature of the surfaces in our space. Think of standing next to a warm oven or conversely next to a cold window in the wintertime. Our level of clothing also affects comfort as does activity level or a metabolic rate. To these, Lisa Hishan would add cultural factors, how we use a space and influence from our other senses. Imagine how a smooth surface seems cold or soft surface seems warm. We even call colors warm and cool. These other factors can affect our overall perception of comfort in a space. This then is the designer's palette. It's how we can design for thermal delight and at the same time dramatically, dramatically reduce the energy that we need for heating and cooling. Let's take a look at how these were actually deployed. The summer house is conceptually like a cave. You want to be out of the sun against the cool surface of the stone surrounded by calming blues and grays and greens, a gentle breeze, the cold exhalation from the earth. Many of these strategies can actually translate to architecture. First, we use the coolness of the earth. The home is earth burned. 
and the Earth stays at a very constant temperature throughout the summer, about 60 degrees. That not only keeps the air temperature in the home low, it also means that it's the temperature of the walls and the concrete floors, and in this case, even the concrete roof, those surfaces remain cool. And stepping on that cool, smooth surface has a large impact on our perception of the coolness of the space and can keep us comfortable at higher air temperatures, especially when we combine it with other strategies like air movement. Second, we need to keep the summer sun out to make sure the space doesn't heat up. There are large fixed shading devices over the large south facing windows. And the sculptural angled roof that covers the second story is not an arbitrary design move, it's actually a shading device. And the angles at the window openings are determined by the angles of the sun. We use detailed sunlight analysis to optimize the design of these elements, to let the sun in exactly when it was needed, but keep it out when it was not. And we use the landscape. The home was located to take advantage of existing trees, which were carefully preserved during construction. A sycamore to the west provides shading from the afternoon sun and helps the master bedroom feel as if it's floating among the trees. The swaying branches and dappled light from this tree helps to provide visual cues of coolness that can contribute to that sensation of uh, comfort, of feeling cool. Third, we provide air movement. The home is designed to be naturally ventilated when conditions allow, especially at nighttime, when cool air pools at the base of the hill. The home's sloped roof creates negative pressure that draws air through the home with prevailing summer winds. And high ceilings, especially in the bedrooms, allows heat to stratify and be exhausted. When it's too hot for natural ventilation, ultra-efficient ceiling fans in all of the living spaces provide the air movement that is needed. So are those strategies enough? For 96% of hours annually, yes, we can stay within the conventional adaptive comfort zone. About 4% of hours are slightly beyond the limits of this zone, but that also does not take into account the additional usage and sensory factors that we discussed. So what about the winter house? This of course wants to be small, snug, cozy, with warm colors, thick blankets, rays of sunlight. So first we let the sun in. Those same shading elements that we saw earlier are designed to capture as much of the winter sun as possible, allowing the entire surface of the glass to become a passive solar heater and warming the concrete floors. Second, we keep the heat in. The home is essentially wrapped in a blanket of insulation. It's extremely well insulated, about three times the amount of insulation as a conventional new home. The earth berming helps here as well, because instead of having outdoor temperatures of 10 or 20 degrees, we have the earth against most of the walls uh, at 40 or 50 degrees through the winter. The home is also extremely airtight, about 10 times tighter than a conventional new home. Proof of these strategies came during the polar vortex in early 2018. Um, during this time, outdoor air temperature, which you see in gray in this graph, stayed below freezing for over two weeks, dipping as low as negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. At that time, the home was nearly complete, but not yet occupied. The mechanical systems were not operating, but the temperature and humidity sensors were operating. And what they captured was pretty amazing. The home stayed between 40 and 65 degrees during this period. That's a delta of over 70 degrees compared to the outside temperature. And again, that's with no mechanical heating. That's purely passive design. And you can see in this data at the top, the colored bars are different rooms in the house. You see the heartbeat rhythm of solar gain as the sun heats up the concrete floor and the heat slowly dissipates throughout the night. That rhythm, that visceral connection to the sun and the seasons is, I believe, one of the most important benefits of this type of approach. Because sustainability is not simply about saving energy, although that is critical. It has to be about a shift in our mindset, our worldview, uh, a shift that locates us as humans, as active participants in the natural world, always mindful of the systems that we rely upon to sustain us. Of course, the home does need some supplemental heat. 
There are electric radiant coils embedded in those concrete floors, controlled on a room by room basis, so we only provide heat where and when it's needed. Radiant heat, the feeling of warm floors against our feet, again, keeps us comfortable at a lower air temperature, meaning that the thermostat can be set to 63 or 64 degrees and you still feel plenty warm and plenty comfortable. That's the magic of designing for thermal delight for all of the ways in which we experience comfort. If we use all of the tools in the designer's toolbox, we can not only save energy, we can also create an experience that is more comfortable, more complete, and deeply in tune with the experience of the natural world. While the specific strategies employed in this house may not be applicable to all geographies and building types, the approach to comfort as a dynamic and sensual experience, addressable first by passive design, is widely applicable, and is one that we are using at my company, Soul Design and Consulting, in the design of a number of different buildings, from other single family ho homes to townhomes and mixed use buildings. I believe this approach has great potential to create an architecture that is not only truly sustainable and radically efficient, but also richer and more satisfying to experience. Thank you.